Hey guys, welcome back to another video, and on this one we're going to be building the best Phalanx build for our raids on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Let's start off with where to get it. To get Phalanx, we're going to be coming over here, so I want you to fly over to North Province Area 2. Once you're here, around the Pokemon Center, you're going to be looking around until you find a Phalanx. There's quite a few of them here, as you can see, and then you just want to encounter it. You don't have to worry about the Terra type when you catch it, it's only a fighting type, so it will come with a fighting type Terra. So I just want you to go ahead and catch that and then we'll get into the build. So like I said, we've got our fighting type Terror and the item we're gonna be holding is the Metronome. Now what the Metronome does is it's a chain item. Uh, if you use a move, let's say we use close combat, then the damage would be at 100%, just its base damage. But if you use it again, the turn after would be 120% damage and it keeps going up in 20% until you reach 200% on your sixth turn this would be. And if it gets interrupted, then it resets. Very strong guy. Item, I'm going to show you where to get it right now. So to get your metronome, I want you to fly over to Lavintia North. Once you're here, we're going to be heading in this direction towards the Deli Bird Shop. I want you to go inside there. And then we're going to be clicking on battle items, scroll down a little bit, and you can buy it for 15,000 poker dollars. So do that and equip it onto your links. After we get outside the Deli Bird Shop, turn right and there's a black and green shop right over there. It's the Chansey Supply Shop. I want you to go inside there. Once you're inside here, we're going to be scrolling down towards the physical attacking mints that change our nature, and we're going to be buying the adamant mint. This is up in attack, down in special attack. We're not a special attacker. We don't need it. So I want you to equip that onto your phalanx so it has the right nature. As you can see right there, we are up in attack and down in special attack, and our EVs are going to go into HP and attack. If you don't know where to buy the EV items, then you can just go back inside the Chansey Supply Shop, and you can buy your HP ups and your proteins for 10,000 and polka dollars each this will get your hp and your attack up and you will need 26 hp ups and 26 proteins so altogether it will cost you 520,000 polka dollars after you've got your max evs we're going to want max ivs as well in everything except special attack if you don't know how to check your max ivs just go in your main menu and then click on boxes and then we're going to be hovering over for links and then you want to click the plus button this will take you to your stats, click it again, and then it will take you to your IVs. Now, any max IVs will just say best on it, like when I caught this for links, it looks like it came with the best special attack in IV, which is unfortunate that it didn't come with one of the other stats, because we don't even need special attack. So now we've got to buy five bottle caps to maximize all the other stats. If you don't know where to get bottle caps, you can just come to any deli bird shop and then click on general goods and it'll be the first item. They cost 20,000 each. Normally you would be buying five for each Pokemon without the uh, attacking stat that it doesn't use. So it costs you 100,000 and each bottle cap trades in for one max IV. So you're going to want to buy however many you need for your Pokemon. And then after that, what you want to do is head towards the top of the map and we're going to be flying over to Montenevra. Okay, once you're in Montenevra, we're going to be coming over to this guy with the Obama Snow right over here. He will hype train your Pokemon. You just want to click on your Phalanx and then you want to click Bottle Caps. And we're going to be clicking on HP, Attack, Defense, Special Defense and Speed and then start the training. So now that you've got your max EVs and IVs, you have maximized your chances of winning those raids because you're on max stats. So we was on 325 attack, I'm pretty sure. Now we're on 328, that's gone up a little bit and all our other stats would have gone up a little bit. Now the ability we're going to be using is Defiant. It is the hidden ability, so if you didn't catch it in a raid, you will need an ability patch and to get an ability patch you will need to do six star raids and then use your ability patch on your actual Phalanx and then it will change his ability. Now his other ability, it isn't necessarily a bad ability, uh, it stops other Pokemon from getting critical hits on him, but I chose to go with Defiant, because if we get any of our stats decreased, then that's going to help us win that raid massively. Now going over the moveset, we have Brick Break, Swords Dance, Iron Defense and Close Combat. So our main attacking move is going to be Brick Break, it's quite powerful, 75 power, 100 accuracy, and if they have a light screen or a reflector, we can just break right through it. Our second move is going to be Swords Dance. This increases our attack by two stages. This is going to be very helpful in defeating that raid even quicker. Our third move is going to be Iron Defense. This raises our defense by two stages. We're already quite bulky as far as defense goes. So this will just make it so that against those physical attackers, we're even better and we're just unstoppable. Our fourth move is going to be Close Combat. There wasn't too many options here. You can go with uh, Coverage, so you can use Poison Jab or Iron Head as Coverage, if that's what you prefer. But I like having that stab when I'm using my moves in raids. So I've gone with Close Combat. So the idea is, if I actually go down in a raid, but I have my Terrestrialize, when I come back, I will Terrestrialize and use Close Combat 
combat to do the maximum amount of damage I can after using sword stance if needed. So that'll be a, like a go all out last bit of the raid kind of thing because it does lower our defense and special defense. Now unfortunately when we lower our own stats defiant does not activate it only happens when the opponent lowers our stats or we probably would use like a bulk up close combat build but that's not the case so we're running with this now close combat and iron defense you can get through level up so just level your phalanx to level 100 and then you can just relearn iron defense and close combat however brick break and sword stance we need to get tms to learn them and if you don't know where to get tms you can visit any pokemon center it's the green section the tm machine so first up we're going to get tm 58 brick break this will cost us 5000 lp free makahita sweat free halucha downs and free cribrala shells let me show you where to get these so to get our makahita sweat we're going to fly over to east province area free rest stop and once you're here, it shouldn't be too long till you find a Makahita or Hariyama. Some appeared straight away right there, and then you just want to take them out. And then you will get your Makahita sweat. Now to get our Halucha, we're going to head over to North Province Area 1. And it shouldn't be too long, you just want to look around this area until the Halucha appears. There's one right there, so we're just going to take that out. And that will get us our Harlucha Downs. Now for our Crabrala Shell, you just want to go down a bit. And this island right here is the island we're going to be going to. So what you want to do is you want to head over to East Province Area 3 Rest Stop. And then make your way over. So we're just going to be making our way over right now. When you get to this uh, cliffy bit right here, just jump over. And there'll be an island right down there. Once you get to the island, you should see a Crabrala relatively quickly. And you just want to take that out and get your Crabrala Shell. Or you can come to this side of the island and there will actually be the Evolve Farm of Krabala and you can take that out and you'll get even more Krabala shells. Next up we have TM88 Sword Stance and to get this we need 5000 LP, 3 Zangoose Claws, 3 Gibble Scales and 3 Cypher Claws. So we're going to start off with our Cypher. I want you to fly over to Castroya Watchtower number 1. And then we're going to be jumping off on the actual lake side of the uh, cliff. And when you jump off, we're going to be searching in this area until we find a cipher. So there's one right over there. There's actually two. We're going to take the cipher out and that will get us our cipher claws. I hate that the rain makes you lag so much still in this game. Now to get Zangus, we're going to be putting a waypoint right here on the map. And then I'm going to be flying over to the shrine. If you don't have the shrine, just fly to the next nearest location and make your way over. So I'm going to be climbing this cliff right here. When you get to the top, you can start to see the actual cipher. If there's any that spawn, there is one that has spawned. I can't get out the cliff though. There we go. We're just going to take that cipher out. Did I say cipher? I meant Zangus. And then you just want to take the Zangus out and you will get your free Zangus claws. Next up, we have our Gibble. To get Gibble, we're going to be coming to the bottom left corner of the map. We're going to be flying over to Alphanada. Once you get to Alphanada, we're going to be heading over to this cave right over here. Once you get inside the cave, you're going to be looking out for either Gabites or Gibbles. There's a Gabite right there on its own. I never actually see him on their own. That's quite weird. But you just want to take it out and you will get your Gibble Scales. Normally you won't find one like as soon as you go in the cave though. And uh, once you get in the cave, we're just going to be following this path down. And eventually we will run into one. And then you can just take that out. Now that we've gone over the full build, let's get into some raids. So we found our first five star raid. It's an ice type Tauros. Uh, the actual fire type Tauros it is the special one. Uh, let's begin. So the opposition Tauros actually has Intimidate, which is perfect because that raises our attack sharply. So our attack has now gone up by two stages because of our ability. So now we don't even need to use Sword Stance. We can just get straight into the Brick Breaks. So it's not doing too much damage. It uses close combat. A big mistake. Um, the reason I'm not using Iron Defense is Tauros isn't like uh, the most dangerous physical attacker and we have really good uh, defense in the first place. If it was a really strong Pokemon, I would use uh, Iron Defense first and then we use Brick Break again. It does a ton of damage, as you can see. It steals some of our Terra Charge, which is not good, and then removes negative effects from itself. So the Intimidate that our Tauros used at the start is now gone. We're going to just keep using Brit Breaks until we can Terrestrialize. It's used Headbutt on us. We're going to go with another Brit Break. It's going to use Flare Blitz. It does a bit more damage, uh, still not too much though. The Lynx is really bulky, so it'll be hard for physical attackers to actually do damage to us in the first place. Umbreon does burn the Tauros with Synchronize, so that's amazing. Now we can Terrestrialize into our Fighting type form. 
and do a ton of damage with Brit Break. Let's see how much damage we do. Hopefully it breaks the shield. So we do some damage and break the shield. There's the shield going. The Tauros nullifies all the stats and ability changes on our side. That's not good. It uses Flare Blitz again. And it manages to burn us. So that's not good. So we are actually going to heal up just to get rid of that burn. Just to be safe. And then because uh, that was an interruption, we'll just use Close Combat now to finish it off. And the Tauros goes down. So as you can see, the Flinx is very good against those physical attackers. Let's get into the second raid. So we found our second 5 star raid, it's an ice type magna zone, let's begin. So we're going to start off with a swords dance, this will raise our attack by two stages. It's going to use thunder wave to paralyze us on turn one, that's very unfortunate. This is probably going to be one of those raids. I'm going to use swords dance again, turn two. This will get our attack to plus four. It's going to use flash cannon, does a decent amount of damage to us. Uh, we're going to try and use Sars Dance again. We do manage to use Sars Dance. Now we're on plus six attack, max attack. It's going to use Thunderbolt. Now we can take one, maybe two more attacks. It does steal some of our charge, that's fine. Then uses Magnet Rise. Now I'm going to show you a different way you can play Flinx. You can try and just do a ton of damage with three Sars Dances and a close combat, and then be paralyzed and can't move. So it uses Thunderbolt again. So I'm gonna actually heal up here. I did want that uh, close combat to actually hit, but unfortunately it didn't. And now the other Pokemon in the actual game, I think are gonna ruin it and uh, the shield's gonna go up. But we heal ourselves, get rid of that paralyze. It uses try attack on us. We survive that comfortably, and now we're gonna use close combat. Hopefully finish off this Magna Zone. And yes, we do finish off the Magna Zone in one hit. So we did that because the Paralyze would have been annoying that game. And I just wanted to get the raid over super quick. That's another way you can play for links. Even if you wanted to only play that way and only play for one shots, you could exchange the Metronome for a Life Orb. I wouldn't recommend it over the other build, the one I'm using right now. But it's something you can do. Let's get on to the third raid. So we found our third five star raid. It's a normal type Bombardier. Let's see how it goes. Now in this one, I'm gonna show you like kind of a different approach. So we've had like three different ways to play for links, all with the same four moveset. So we do have two Pokemon on our team with Intimidate. So that's gonna be very strong for us. Bombardier is a physical attacker. We're gonna use Iron Defense. This is another way you can play. If you're against physical attackers, just use Iron Defense. And I don't even expect uh, Brave Bird to do that much. Look, it's done literally no damage and it's super effective. And then you can set up however you want. Like you could even go for the one shot if you really wanted to. Uh, so that's our second Swords Dance, which raises our attack by two stages. Gonna use Brave Bird again, literally no damage again. It steals some of our Terror Charge. We're gonna use Swords Dance for a third time, putting us on max attack. It's used Torment on us, so we can't use Swords Dance again, but that's fine because we're on max attack. We don't want to use it again. So Bombardier has used Sucker Punch on us, doesn't do too much damage. And now we're just gonna use Close Combat to finish the raid. As you can see, Phalanx is a lot of fun. You can play it a lot of different ways. Even better when you're against a physical attacker. But those three raids, they just all felt super easy and super fun and it's not actually a pokemon i see a lot in raids online oh we got two herba mystica both spicy amazing i had a ton of fun using this pokemon and i suggest you go out and actually build this pokemon and find out for yourself just how fun and strong it is speaking of fun go check out this spirit tomb build i'm gonna put on screen right now it's a really strong build and it's very bulky and if you want to join the Discord, there will be a link in the comments. Everyone's welcome. We're going to be having a lot of fun over there. And I'll catch you on the next one.